Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 839. I had the black pieces. My opponent started off with e4 and I went with um, e6, the French defense. And here he plays the very rare move uh, b3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, the ninth choice in the uh, opening database here. And apparently it's known as the Horowitz attack. It's actually not in my copy of ECO, but that's what uh, Lichess called it. Um, so I played the natural move, um, d5. This is just uh, the idea of e6 is to get on d5 supported by a pawn. And then just to show how this line is typically played, uh, bishop to b2. And well, notice that uh, black has the advantage here. Um, this is, position is liked for black by both the uh, opening database and the chess engine. It's not like it's winning immediately, but uh, black has a pretty pleasant edge here. Um, black can even uh, grab a pawn here and uh, hold on to it for a little bit. So I think the idea is that uh, white will eventually win this pawn back because the, the chess engine doesn't give uh, black a full pawn advantage here, but uh, maybe black gets some edge in development by uh, bringing his pieces out and white has to waste time uh, recapturing that pawn. So that's uh, uh, one, of the, one of the lines in the Horowitz attack. Uh, my opponent played differently, he played e takes d5, so it starts to look more like a kind of an exchange variation. And then um, bishop b2 is still the, the move here. He played queen e2 check, and at this point we're really just out of the opening book. I blocked with bishop e7. I had some um, second thoughts about this, but it, it turns out this is a fine move here and uh, top choice, so nothing wrong with that. He goes here, and, uh, and then the move I played was d4, blocking that bishop. Um, the idea is that uh, if I play knight f6, he can take and uh, I'll have to take back and mess up my kingside pawns, and I wasn't sure I wanted that. Um, the chess engine actually rates that move, knight f6, as one of the uh, top choices here. So, um, well, I guess if we look at this position going forward again, um, what uh, black has here is some uh, easy development, and uh, black has the bishop pair and open lines. So I think um, you know, probably black will end up castling queenside, uh, whereas uh, white... Uh, still has to get the queen out of the way so the bishop can develop. Uh, and uh, white has lost this uh, beautiful dark squared bishop that's just missing in action, missing from the board. So uh, so it's a good position for black, both in the short term with some development advantage and the long term with the uh, bishop pair. So so knight f6 was still falling, falling for uh, uh, white's plan, just playing knight f6 and letting him take it seems to be uh, one of the top top moves here, but uh, d4 is also another top move. Um, just blending that bishop and preparing to play knight f6 without uh, suffering any kingside pawn damage. Um, let's see, he went knight f3, piling up on the pawn, and I defended it. Um, the chess engine, by the way, uh, would just uh, give up the pawn at this point and play knight f6, let him have the pawn and castle, and it thinks uh, black is also good in this position. Um, that kind of decision is hard to make in a blitz game, but you can see, actually, that uh, there's some, some real threats that black has here. So he's going to get, uh, you know, white's going to have to untangle to uh, escape, escape from these ideas. And, uh, and so white, or black, black should be able to exploit that and get quite a development edge. So it seems like a worthwhile uh, pawn sack. But anyway, I decided to hold on to the pawn and uh, keep this bishop shut out. So it's, it's got to two ideas here, allowing me to develop, holding on to my material, and also uh, and also uh, shutting this bishop out of the game. So this was also one of the top choices. Uh, so it's not like I played a bad move here. It's just interesting that the chess engine would even uh, sacrifice that pawn. Um, let's see. So I played c5. He went c3. I continue defending with knight c6. Takes. I take. Then he played queen c4. This is maybe a slight mistake because I get to uh, kick the queen around. I get to develop a tempo with this uh, bishop e6 move. And then queen b5, it seems, he is an outright blunder. Um, although I didn't exploit that one. But it, the chess engine says the queen should drop back to c2. White should really just forget about trying to win a pawn and worry about uh, finishing his development and getting castles and doing things like that. And, uh, and he probably has still has a playable game here. It's not... Uh, completely over. But after queen b5, uh, chess engine thinks I should really win. Although uh, I didn't see this idea, so I just think it's interesting. Um, a6, kicking the queen and sacrificing this pawn. 
and then knight to b4 with the threat of knight to c2 check uh, winning the exchange now you've given up a pawn for the exchange so it's not entirely uh, clear it's it's a huge edge but um, it is if you play it right and it's funny how the chess engine plays it it um, it doesn't play knight c2 immediately it plays rook b8 to chase the queen around and then it plays bishop to d5 to chase the queen some more so it throws in these tempo moves and uh, and uh, you know according to the chess engine's evaluation if i had played knight c2 immediately which is if i had discovered this idea that's probably the way i would have played it it gives only a slight edge to black but uh well, it's going to follow up with bishop to f6 here before it ever plays knight c2 if uh it but uh, yeah the way the chess engine plays it it uh, takes advantage of all these tempo moves and gets all his pieces out and into the game before before finally uh capturing some material with knight to c2 so just uh interesting way to play uh and correct i imagine anyway i uh, played queen d7 so i'm just defending the pawn i didn't see those ideas and uh, this is still good for white and uh and then he took and so i think this is actually the losing move if he had uh just uh uh, let's see, played something like uh, bishop to c4, just developing. Yeah, after I played queen d7, it's his turn, right? He can play something like bishop to c4. And, um, you know, there's an edge to black in this position, but not uh, not a huge one. I could go bishop to f6. He could castle. I could give my knight out to e7, so everything is uh, protected and defended, and I have pretty pretty good um, placement of all my pieces here. So it seems to be okay for black with a slight edge um, but uh, taking this pawn is is just a losing move here and um, the immediate bishop to f6 is actually the strongest way to play it because it, it puts some immediate pressure on that knight that needs to be defended um, the way i played it is not quite as accurate but uh, I, I find that bishop f6 idea and so this still is a winning uh, a winning uh, continuation as well and I get that bishop f6 move in. And now he's in big trouble here. He tried knight takes e6, but just to show the uh, chess engine continuation, it would play bishop e2, <laughs> developing and allowing him to castle, and it would just give up a piece here. And, uh, oops, oh, bishop takes, it says, is uh, it's best here. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and either queen takes or knight takes. Say knight to c3, blocking blocking that path to the rook so he doesn't lose more material but he's just a piece down and i can even trade queens here if he castles so uh so certainly an easily winning position for uh for white so he tried to i mean for black so he tried to mix it up by playing a uh, knight takes e6 and uh and i really should have just taken with the queen i didn't see this but if i take with the queen it's with check and then he needs to block this and then after he blocks it, however he blocks it, I can I can grab the bishop, and then the rook in the corner is still uh, is still lost. So so I win massive amounts of material that way. Um, I, I grabbed here first, and uh, and then he escapes. I mean he's still losing, but he can play knight takes g7 and uh, check. And here I went king d8. Um, I could have played bishop takes g7, and then. It would probably go like this, king takes, and then knight to c3. And uh, maybe that's a little better than uh, the game because I have some more material on. But I'm just a piece up, whereas uh, the line in the game, I end up a rook up. So actually, uh, I, you know, I hadn't noticed that I could just take that knight, and he's just giving up that piece. But um, the way I played it is actually uh, the top choice of the engine, too, because this rook isn't going anywhere, and this, this uh, knight is still hanging here. Um, let's see. So he traded queens at this point and played knight c3. And I guess that's the difference when he plays knight c3. It's my queen on this side or that side. So I get to grab a whole rook here instead of just a piece. Let's see. He brings this out and then uh, I take. So the situation here is he's got uh, two extra pawns, one on each side. He's got three pawns against two here and three pawns against two here. That exchange kind of improved his pawn structure too. So I have to be a little bit careful, but I do have a whole extra rook, and I get it into the game quickly. And so I really am just winning here. Um, and he tried a few 
tricks, but um, well, I think basically his only idea here was to try and take all of the pawns and um, you know also look for look for little tactics. So he so he did manage to uh, grab a pawn there and get down to this situation where it's two knights uh, versus a, a king. Which if there weren't any pawns on the board, that's actually a draw. You can't mate with the two knights. But there are enough pawns. I just have to make sure that uh, I don't let him trade them all off. So just have to be careful here. And so I'm moving my pieces forward and not moving my pawns, trying to keep his king out and coordinate my pieces so they can uh, come around and stop these pawns and eventually I will just take them. And uh, that's what happened in the game. You know, and there's some trades you can't avoid, but placing this knight here prevented him from moving these pawns forward so that uh, that uh, gave me enough time to mop up these pawns on the king side while he was maneuvering on the queen side. So the fact that I had uh, a pawn on both sides of the board, even though it was only one pawn, uh, really uh, helped make this an easy win. So, um, you know, I think at some point he could have actually traded off that pawn, but the way he played it, he didn't even get the pawn on that side. And uh, this, of course, is a pretty simple win with the knight here protecting the queening skip where so the king can only go back and forth. Um, and uh, I'll just push this pawn forward at the right time and um, mate him. So uh, anyway, he uh, after two more moves, yes, just push that pawn forward. And he has to step away. Um, he resigned at this point. So interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon.